Hey guys, Harley from Cricket Fanatics Magazine here and today with another special episode of our Knockdown series. Today we're with Imran Manak. So for you guys that don't know, he's new to our platform obviously. He played for the Titans in the One Day Cup of course, played for the Toronto Spartans, Easterns as well. So he's a, he's a real pros prospect in this country, more experienced than most, but um, he really knows what it takes to be a professional cricketer in this country. Now he's moved over to the Cobra, so we're really excited about this. But we're just going to get to know him a little bit better. That's the point of this whole platform and uh, to give guys like him exposure. So, how's it, Imran? Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me, Cardi. <laughs> yeah, so um, let's start off with the lockdown. Now, you're obviously in Johannesburg at the moment still. You're waiting to move over. Um, tell me about what lockdown has been like there. Have the people been listening to the rules, etc.? cetera? And uh, yeah. So, yeah, lockdown, lockdown in Joburg has been quite interesting. A lot of people have been saying that it's a really good thing at the time, you know, that it's something that can definitely help us going forward and stuff like mm. that. And, yeah, I'm sure everybody knows that everybody does want to move around during these times. And it's not an easy thing to do right now because, like you can see the other countries, it's something that's been spreading quite hectically. Yeah. You know? And yeah, yeah, like in Joburg, it's been quite nice. Like I've been enjoying everything. I've been enjoying the alone time and the home time with the family. I also want to get out and do a few more things, but it's not really allowed in these times. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we all we all have that um, that drive to want to be social and be out and be with our friends. Yeah, but we can't now. So it's quite it's quite tough. Hopefully, these type of things make it a little bit more fun. But <laughs> with regards to your cricket, regards to your cricket. How do you um, keep sharp during this time? Okay, you obviously being a spin bowler, etc. So you will have. Um, do you are you bowling in your backyard? I mean, etc. I mean, some people don't have huge backyards, but um, how are you keeping fit and keeping healthy? And so, so we've obviously got a program that we have to follow that we've mm -hmm. got from the Cobras and stuff like that. And oh, Sherman, what can you yeah. guys order, really? <laughs> Yeah, sure. <laughs> but 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 it, it's it's been quite nice, you know. It's been something that we can do at home. You don't really need a lot of weights and stuff like that, and it's more like body weight stuff. Running obviously is it honestly depends on what size place you have because you can't control that. Like I've been doing some running here and there, but mm -hmm. you know it's not it's not the easiest thing to do when you want to get a lot of K's under the belt and. Yeah, I'm not really how to run outside at the moment. Yeah, that's true. So, like, I mean, I mean, they lifting it through the levels is almost like it's all, it's almost like um, load shedding in a way with the levels. So, <laughs> so uh, we'll see how it happens. You know, Cape Town obviously quite um, condensed. I would say it's not as spread out. I feel as Joburg is. I think that's my opinion of it. Just being around in both areas. Um, so a lot of the areas are quite close to each other. I mean, we don't have to travel kilometers to get to places. Um, so <laughs> whereas in Joburg, it's a lot, uh, the place is a lot more further apart, I feel. Um, so yeah, people are struggling. You know, Cape Town is the city where it's very lively and stuff and people are used to a social life. So I think people are quite are struggling, but I think they're doing an okay job of keeping the sanity um, uh, as best as we can. But let's talk, talk about you as a cricketer and your journey. Um, I like to hear the stories about what that's been like, um, how you started and how you got into it. Okay, so I am someone that comes from a family of a few cricketers. I've got my dad, I've got my uncle, I've mm. got my uncle's dad. It's 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 tough. And obviously, I have a few uncles that play cricket. Let me just say that. <laughs> I don't and, want to do um, Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's, it, it's been one of those journeys where I think it was kind of inevitable that I actually play. And I was, I think I was maybe two years old or something like that. And I was getting walked around cricket grounds because my dad was playing. And mm -hmm. like it was, it was, it, it was something that I think I was kind of destined to do, you know during my time and stuff like that. So I think um, I, I started off playing cricket in the nets. I, I would have, I would be watching my dad and then, you know, like we'd, we'd go for a lunch break and then there'd be um, 
people that would play with my dad, club cricket. Yeah. And then their sons would be there. And then like we'd go eat some balls there on the side and stuff like that. But I don't think I really got into cricket at that point. I think there was a time when I was about eight or nine years old. And then mm-hmm. I said, you know what? I actually want to do this stuff like properly. I want to play a little bit more than just school cricket, you know, because at the time school cricket wasn't really... There wasn't really a lot of games and stuff. So I said, I want to play on a Saturday instead of just on a Wednesday, you know. And then um, I joined a club called Delphos in the west of Joburg. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I played a lot of junior kids over there. And they were a big part of me, I think, into my just till the start of my teens. Mm-hmm. From about then till the start of my teens, I started playing for them. And then I went to Lanasia Cricket Club after that. Okay. And I played quite a few years for an Asia cricket club. And I think, yeah, like that's kind of where those two clubs are kind of where I grew up playing cricket. Mm. So you mentioned to me actually earlier that you you spent a year, year playing for Primrose's cricket club year in Cape Town. The, I know the club scene in Cape Town quite well and it's quite hectic and it's quite um, competitive, etc. And quite popular. What is the club scene like in Johannesburg? Um... Well, the club scene in Johannesburg was also quite tough. You know, you growing up as a youngster, you're getting thrown in to play with men and stuff like this. It it really tests you as a person because, you know, those guys will test you. They'll want the best out of you. And it's not like you're a youngster anymore. You have to learn very quickly and grow up very quickly. And yeah. you have to put in and make your role yours at the time that they give you. And that's the best way you can fit in and get get with the guys and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. So that's obviously, I've spoken to quite a few guys, like um, Rulofson yesterday also told me about how um, the our club cricket actually helped him in his career and helped him focus and obviously become tougher as a cricketer. Do you feel that that's done that for you? 100%. Like, I think especially when you're a youngster mm. and you may be 14 years old and now you're playing a senior game against guys that are <laughs> 20 years older than you. And obviously they're going to be competitive and they want to get you out. And that is where you have to like start to fight and say like, I'm not just going to let this guy tell me this and let him get me out. I'm going to mm-hmm. have to fight this situation. I want to do the best I can in this situation, not really worry about what they say. And I would say block out the noise. Yeah, of course. So, um, for you, going to kids, of course, a massive school, a massive um, cricketing school, very popular, a lot of cricketers came out of there. You would have played with the likes of Quinton, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if And what was it like to play with the cock and be in a team with him? What was he like at school? Because, I mean, we see him as a pro here, but obviously because he was so young into the setup, we didn't really get to, to spend time with him as a kid in franchise cricket. So... Um, what is it like? What was it like to play with him and be a lot in the team with him? Yeah, Quentin was one of those guys that was, he was a really funny guy. You know, he <laughs> always get the guys laughing and like he'd say things where guys would be like, what is this guy actually saying? You know what I mean? But when it got onto the cricket field and stuff like that, he was one of those guys that would just dominate. He would score runs quickly, he would hit guys for massive sixes. And it was like almost assumed when he went into bat that he would score 100 or he would score sure. runs very quickly and hurt guys very quickly. And I'm sure his school record also says that way. He was just someone that I think destroyed bowling attacks. And he was yeah. quite a clever cricketer as well. And you know, like you can actually understand why he is where he is today because of what you saw at school. There were just these small glimpses where you see someone you're like, this guy's very good. Yeah. And he's very young and how is he this good, you know? And I guess at school, a lot of people think that and they're like, yeah, I think this guy will play for South Africa. I think this guy will play for South Africa. But this guy was now already in the strikers team in grade 10 and stuff like that. And you're like, what? This guy is actually (laughs) unreal, you know? Yeah, that's unbelievable. Because but in your career, because generally speaking, people that went to kids and played and live in Johannesburg, play for Gauteng. Um, for for you, you played majority of your games for Easterns, and um, obviously then later you got you signed with the Titans. So, what was your reason behind going to Easterns and playing for Easterns, and how did it come about? Okay, so I think um, yeah, I I only played provincial cricket under nineteen for Gauteng. That was the only year I played. I played like a whole lot of weeks and stuff like that. 
Mm-hmm. But the only year I actually played was Gauteng in 19. And then mm-hmm. I played Gauteng Academy. And I just felt in my life that was a moment where I needed a change. Like I was, you know, I was, I was in a place where the same thing was happening every year. I was going through the same routines all the time. And it was just a time where I needed something different because I wanted to progress my career. But at that moment, I would say it was very stagnant, you know. Yeah. And that was the time when I said, you know what, um, I want to actually take a risk and I want to go see where else I can play so I can get taken out of my comfort zone and I can actually put in the work here somewhere new where I have to impress new people. You know, people don't know me. I'm, I'm coming in as a new new person. And like, I wanted to also prove, my, prove to myself that I'm good enough, you know? Yeah, of course. And then... And then um, I had a chat with a coach of Easterns at the time. His name was Heinrich Milan. Mm-hmm. And from there, we had a chat and he said that, like, obviously you played Gauteng Academy, you you have to do well at club cricket and then you can be part of the academy. It doesn't just work, you go straight into the academy. So I was like, okay, it's a risk I'm willing to take, you know, and I worked very hard that off season. Like I tried to do as much as I could, and the season came around. I played club cricket. It it was a very good season personally for me, and it was also something where I could say, you know, it it went extremely well. Like just me being in a different different place, I had to go to Benoni every day from yeah. the south of Jordan, which isn't that close, <laughs> and, yeah. and it was it was really nice. You know, it was. It was an experience where you're not going to the Wanderers every day. You're going to mm. Wollamore Park. Now you actually have to make Wollamore Park your home, you know? And that that also, it's it's a transition, but it's really nice also because it's a new, new, new place, new venue, you know? Somewhere else where international cricket's played. It's, it's, it's different, but it was nice. And then I played for Easterns that season. And yeah, like it, it went quite well that year. I... I had a good season for Easterns as well. We played, I think it was five games, five first class games and five 2020 games. Yeah. And then the season, yeah, that it was the second half of the season. So I played then. And then um, I played, I think it was two years for East, Easterns. And then um, I felt I needed to go on another, you see, I felt like I was stagnant again. And I needed to go. <laughs> yeah to move again and that's when I went to Cape Town to go play for Primrose obviously with the intention of playing for Western Province which yeah. at the time it didn't really work out but okay. you know I, I got to train with the guys I got to practice with the guys whether it was the Cobras guys or the Western Province guys and I learned a lot there like I actually had to change my game a little bit you know now you're playing at the coast it's not always something mm. that you think at the high felt because now the ball's not bouncing that much and you also have to get much better with your batting technique because it's a little bit different now. Yeah. There's a little bit of reversing and stuff like that as well. Yeah, amazing. And, That's crazy. Yeah, so yeah. I didn't like I didn't actually know that part of your journey that you actually wanted to play for province at a particular time. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so you played with the likes of like Zubair Ramza, for example, at Prem Roses, we, you would have. We, we played, yeah. We played, we played together at Prom Roses. He was uh, captain of the team, but he didn't play every week, you know, because he was <laughs> he was having a really good season for Western Province at the time, and I think that was the it could have been the year after he scored that double hundred. So just after mm. he made it breakthrough, and then he was playing a lot for Western Province, and he did really well that year. I think. Yeah. So there's obviously a lot of, I think you moving over to the Cobras now. I think. For the Cobras as well, I think it's a massive move and a great move for them because of the experience that you've you've had in semi-pro cricket, of course, and obviously now with franchise cricket with the Titans. Um, you played obviously a lot of games in the one-day format, um, but I want to know how you feel about you playing all formats. Um, you've you've played obviously more games in, in list A cricket. Yeah, um, I think it's just one of those things where, you know. At the high felt you're not always gonna play two spinners or you might play a batsman that bowls. And I feel like, you know, at the coast, that is definitely something I wanna do. I wanna be playing a lot more four day cricket and stuff like and three day cricket, whatever it is. And 
it is really something I want to do and I want to also progress in that because I mean, you don't want to go as a cricketer and not be playing games during the season. You want to be trying to play as much as you can for yeah. a, a, the best players that you can all the time. And that's what it's yeah. about. Yeah, because I you... Think you that I, yeah, yeah. I, I do think also, like, because of that, you know, like, especially semi-pro cricket, you know, there's always another opportunity to play another spinner and stuff like that because you're playing on fourth-day wickets and... That's where you get your opportunity sometimes more than you would in another format. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, for the guys that have just joined in, there's quite a bit of people that have come in. You guys can throw your, your questions in the comment section. <clears throat> I will get them to them a little later. Um, this is just the part where I get to know you, but then you guys can get to know him too. So, <laughs> so um, even I wanted to ask you this. Uh, uh, I don't know how to ask it necessarily, but with regards to your, you're quite a tall guy. And um, people automatically will assume tall guys, fast bowler. Automa so, uh, <laughs> how did you get into that stage? Were you ever a fast bowler first before you became so? A so, I, I like to say it like this I'm maybe a man of a little bit of mystery. Let's just say it like that. Now, <laughs> you know, I come, I come there to the grounds, people see me walking with the spikes to the wicket, you know, for some warm ups. They're like, yo. I see this guy. He's gonna be charging in today, bowling bounces and everything. I, and it's 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 actually something that I get a lot, you know. And people will always say that, like, yo, what do you do? Oh, oh you play cricket. Oh, okay. And um, so you're a fast bowler or what? So then I'm like, uh, no, I'm not really a fast bowler. No, you can use your height to bowl fast. And you know, like everybody will say that. Yeah, of course. And um. I, I think I actually started off as a proper batsman and I would bat and stuff. And then I was a wicket keeper and then I was a fast bowler. And I think um, I just did everything, you know, and there was one tournament. I think it was under 14 or under 15. I'm not hundred percent sure. Mm -hmm. And at this tournament, the team needed a, a spinner. And I was like, yeah, I'll do it. You know, I'm only batting here, so I might as well bowl some off spin. And I bowled that day, and for the rest of that tournament, I actually bowled spin. And it went really well for me, where the people were like, okay, maybe this is actually something you could partake in and work harder at and try and do yeah. some more, you know? And cool. I think that's that's where it changed for me. So, and I became a spinner from there. Yeah, and where do you prefer to bat in the water? I mean, I would take it that you... You also are trying to improve your, um, obviously try to dominate with your bat as well. So where would you prefer to bat in the water? And how do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as a as a as a batting all rounder or more of a bowling all rounder? I see myself as an all rounder. I, I, <laughs> I, I think I think yes, it is something that everyone will say, but I definitely feel like I have scored hundreds. I have batted at high numbers, you know, and. Obviously, sometimes you get looked at as as you come in the team as just a bowler because that's what you do, you know? You do that so well, so people will be like, this is this. Or like some, if someone scores runs, then they'll be like, this guy can just bat, you know? And you you know, you, you still get valued at other places. Like, it doesn't always matter where you bat. It's how you bat in those situations and how many... Mm -hmm times you can help the team win games and how many times you can maybe even help the team draw games and stuff like that and I feel like that's definitely something that I can bring to the game and I think that I can definitely be a very uh, a, a person that's not only known as a bowler but also as an all-rounder and it's something that I'm yeah. definitely going to work on very hard during this off-season because it's yeah. something I want to also improve on and I want to be known also as an all-rounder. Yeah, well, you couldn't have a better batting coach at the moment in the franchise yeah. level now when you move over to Ashwell Prince. So, um, I want to talk to you about the time of the Titans and obviously playing one day cricket there. And <clears throat> tell me about that experience and what it was like to play with the players that were in that side, obviously. I mean, you were obviously playing with Aiden coming back from fitness, of course. And what was it like to play with him and what type of intensity does he bring to the team? You've got guys like Dean Aldo, of course, that's on the lineups and... Okay, you didn't. I don't know if you got to play much with Henrik Klaassen, but I mean, he was around on the Proteus side at, at the time. Um, so tell me about some of the plays you played with and what it was like to play with that franchise at Titan, such a big franchise in this country. 
Yeah, I think I think the Titans is just one of that play, one of those places where those guys are always going to be around. You know, you yeah. you're going to be around guys like Puff played a game with us. You're going to be around guys like Aiden. Wow. You're going to be around guys like Dean, Classy. In the Nets, you have Chris Morris bowling and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, uh, Hardis for Lunes there. And then you know, it's it's there's just so many guys that have actually played for the Proteas that are there and. It's 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 quite a amazing experience because you're always around these guys and you know that they have experience where they've actually played big games. Sometimes even if it's IPL games or big international games, semi-finals, mm. Bard Bardeen. They there was just there's just so many guys that like are around that can try and help you and try and like you know help you grow because you like you I'm actually playing with these guys. I actually feel like I need to up my game here. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's and it's like nice. It's a really nice challenge because I think as any cricketer, you always want to up your game. And I think the better players you play against, the better you'll grow and improve as a player. Yeah. Because I mean, th- those names are unbelievable. I mean, I don't know how much time you got to spend with Shamsi though. Did you get to? No, I. No, uh, much. Shamsi, Shamsi played for South Africa. Yeah. Most of it. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, we. I have, I have, I have been with Shamsi and I have worked with him before and stuff like that. He also played at Eastern I mean. for a little while, mm. and yeah, like he's he's a really good guy, and you know he's he's someone that like I would look up to as well, and I would say like you know we we played at similar similar schools and stuff like that, and you know we were he's always someone that's a competitor, and I love that. Like, I love that as well. Like, I want to be a competitor. I want to try and be in tough situations where I'm getting taken on all the time. That's that's what's great. And, like, he's also a story where, like, he's someone that I would say has inspired a lot of spin bowlers because you've seen how he's been on the sidelines a lot and then he's finally come into the team and taken his opportunity. Mm. And that's sometimes what happens in cricket. And that's so yeah. nice to see, you know. Yeah, I mean, we're losing now some great players, and one of them, obviously, with the Cobras, we're losing Vern Philander now. He's going to go play in county cricket. And now, someone like Farhan Biadin as well, who had a lot of um, experience in the dressing room, etc. And you would have spent a lot of time with Faji. And Faji, I feel, is someone that is very underappreciated in our system. I mean, can you maybe tell me his influence and what it was like to be with him in the dressing room and how he helped youngsters um, improve their games, etc.? Um, yeah, they, I I would say that like to lose to lose any of those two guys that have got the experience that they they do have in the change room and stuff like that's always gonna be big. You 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 come to a change room where a guy has played three pink days and now you know that like you you're actually watching old games on TV and you see this guy in South African colors. It's it's crazy, man. You 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 come there to the nets. Um, you know, the guys are always giving you plans and they're always giving you a way forward and they're like, okay, it's not always you have to do this. It's what do you think about this and why don't you try this in this situation? And I think, like, it's it's more about execution more than anything because you actually have all of the plans, but it's how you execute them at the time. And these are the type of plans that the guys will give you and they'll say, like, look, yeah, I'm going to take you on now. And it's, it, 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 it's quite nice because, like, you're like, okay, I'm going to have, like, it would be a simple situation, like, I'll have square leg up, and the guy's a good sweeper of the ball, and you're like, okay, now I need to bowl where he can't sweep me, or where if he misses, he's out, one of the two. And you can't miss because those guys are that good where they will take you apart if you miss. Mm. Yeah, of course. You, you just grow in that situation, you know? You just yeah. get put in situations, and I think that's the best thing for you to do. Because it's a question I ask a lot of spinners is the, the toughest part, especially in playing limited overs cricket, um, is when someone goes, you, players are going to go after you a lot, batsmen are going to go after you a lot, but um, more in those in that format. Um, you Say now you're getting it for two sixes in a row to come back from that. How do you, how, men- mentally, how do you get out of that um, hole, I would say? Yeah, I think cricket is just one of those sports where you can't actually think about the past. You, yeah. Whether you've been good for two sixes or whatever, you have to be worrying about that next ball and how you're going to try and execute it because those two sixes could be good, exec- 
good execution. Like you could have actually wanted to do that, but maybe the batsman was anticipating that. Yeah. And I think if you think about what has happened, then you're not really thinking about what is going to happen. And that is a very important thing at the time where you're like, I need to focus on this ball. Maybe I want to get out of my over here or maybe I want to try and get this guy out. Of course, yeah. So, so you got to always look at that, you know? And um, if with regards to the Spartans, because obviously you played a little bit with the, you were around the team with the Spartans as well. What was that experience like being with the team? And then you see Avi de Villiers there, maybe someone that you've always looked up to. And uh, um, yeah, tell me about that experience. Monia Morkel, of course, what a great guy he is too. He is. Um, yeah, that was also, um, it was a crazy experience, man. I was, when, yeah, I was, I, I was just, um, I was just training for Mpumalanga game. We were playing mm. against Mpumalanga that, um, that week. And I get this phone call and yeah, I get told that if the Spartans win, whatever, I'm going to go to be with him to the semi-final. So I basically was stepping up into a semi-final game. And, you know, you see you see A.B. De Villiers, you see Mornay Morkel, you see all of these guys in the change room. And it's crazy. These guys also, you know, at the end of the day, you're playing in a knockout tournament as well. And these guys also want to win the tournament. And, yeah. you know, you gotta you got to be ready to also do that. Whether you're playing against guys like, then dunk. It, it doesn't actually matter. The guys that are best in their country are also in the other teams. And the other teams are also like that. It's star-studded. And you come into the team, the environment is unbelievable. I really enjoyed my time with the Spartans. You work with Mark Boucher and Manla Mashindi. And like that was a really great experience. I, I, I think like to get to get back like by guys like A B and stuff like that, them telling you, you know what? You bowled a crate over. I would like to you like that sometimes <laughs> does more when you know it's at the uncle in a Saturday game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so like I mean, what is he like? Um being around him in the team. What's he like in the dressing room of the field, etc.? What is he like? Um yeah, like he's quite a calm guy, you know, he's he's quiet and I think he's He's also someone that like you go to a restaurant with these guys and now there's 20 people trying to take a picture with AB when they're having a seafood platter for two. Do you know what I mean? And <laughs> it's, it, it, it's, just, <laughs> it's just a little bit insane. We, um, he'll, before he bats, he has like this thing where he just visualizes what he's going to go out and do. And that that's what he does. Like He maybe won't like always... Be focused about everything that's happening. You just make sure that he's ready, and I think that's quite nice because you don't actually need to worry about external factors. You need to only worry yeah. about what's important to you at the time cool. and what you can so, control. And I can see guys are getting a little bit of impatient in the comment section. Guys, we are gonna we are going to answer your questions soon. Um, we just got a little surprise for Imran. I wanted to ask you about. Also, some of your friends, friends that you had at the Titans. Um, one of them, I think, Tony De Sousa is moving with you over to to the Cobras. So I thought this would be a, like a perfect opportunity for me to get him on board and ask you a few questions. So, uh, how's it, Tony? <laughs> hello, 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 how's hello, Siri. Hello, Siri. Tony, why do you look like um, your hands weren't putting on your cap there, buddy? My hands. Yeah. Well, who put on you the could... cap for you? <laughs> my girlfriend. <laughs> my, oh. my hair was in the muck. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, was, 30... I was trying to find my cap here. I couldn't find any of my caps. Yes. Yeah, so... <laughs> well, we <laughs> yeah, so uh, even let me start with you. What's this guy like, man? Uh, we, we obviously hear the cap. You want to know what this guy is really like? I had a I had a conversation with him not so long ago as well. But the guys in the Cape, you want to know what's the what's Tony like in the dressing room? Obviously a great batsman, but what was he like? Um oh, yeah, he's, uh... <laughs> he's, he, he, I, I, won't, I I don't know if I have the words or the whole cap to actually describe this man for you. But um... <laughs> 
But I, I won't no. lie. He's, 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 he's one of my good friends. I'll give it to him. He's, uh, he's accomplished something, you know. He, he's, he's actually been a roommate of mine. And, yeah, like, he's somebody that I can actually spend time with, you know. He's someone we can have chats with. And I, 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 actually, I actually think he's a decent oak off the field, which is quite nice. Yeah, Tony, I mean, Imran, we don't know much about him either. So give us some insight to what it's like to be a roommate with him, um, be in a dressing room with him, etc. <laughs> well, uh, he has some very interesting habits as my roommate. Um, he had some interesting stories. Usually people get woken up with their alarms. Um, I mean, if we're in a in a room it's either him playing music early or uh, laughing at something loud smoking <laughs> up i'm just trying to prepare for a game mentally and then i'll just hear and I'm like, wow <laughs> wow i'm just trying to get ready you know, playing an afternoon game um he's not he's not bad at fifa he it is uh He's got good. He's got good banter. He's always actually making jokes and stuff. So he's actually like to have off the game. If you don't do well or something, he's always there making making you laugh, which is quite good. Yeah, because I mean, there's got a lot of compared to the FIFA players in that Cobra's team. So you guys are coming into a team there where you guys are gonna have to hold your own, eh? I don't know if they're gonna play duos, but uh, <laughs> would you team up with Imi? <laughs> I would definitely team up with Imi. He has vision. Um, he does like to to do skills and be a bit of a star player, which is against who I am as a team man. But I'll get used to it, um, and we could definitely do some damage there. <laughs> so, Tony, is there anything you want to ask me? Yeah, maybe something that you can think of that you'd like to ask me. Uh, maybe because this is a cricket show, I'll ask cricket questions. Um, how did you feel when you were selected, uh, like late in the MSL? Obviously, outside pick was that a? Were you surprised or happy, or do you know it was going to come? Um, yeah, I think it was. It came as a bit of a surprise to me because it's not something that I got told about before, and I didn't really know, you know. And I think it was it was quite an exciting thing at the time, but also you don't know what it means for you at the time, where as you get the information about the stuff, but you could also be on the sidelines and just learn from the tournament where I actually played, which was quite amazing. That was a good question, eh? That was a good question, yeah. Do you want to ask another one? <laughs> <laughs> please, please, can I hear another one? I think yeah, you can you ask another one? Um, obviously, you moving to the Cobras and you've basically been more predominant in white ball Bubble cricket, 2020s and 50 overs. Uh, what do you think you're going to have to do now to become, uh, you know, part of the Red Bull side or like cement your, your position in the Red Bull team? Because obviously with Pity going and you being an offie, there's opportunity. But obviously, like you said, when you spoke to me, you have to do some things to, to get into the Red Bull sides. Yo, personally, I think that I need to... I need to make sure that I'm as consistent as can be. And I think that I need to make a name for myself with a bat as well. But I think those two things will take me very far in Red Bull cricket. That's interesting, actually, because you can actually help him out with that, right? Eh? Don't you? You've seen his, uh, opinion. You've seen his yeah, ability can, with a bat. He can hit the long ball. I think, yeah, like he's right. If he gets a. Uh... If he gets consistent with the bat, I think it can only help. If you look at guys like Mutasami and, and even George who's in our team, it also takes pressure off your other skill, I guess, because, I mean, George is scoring runs um, in all formats, uh, lower down, which obviously helps the team. But I think I'm not a spinner, but I can only imagine that it also takes a bit of pressure off your bowling. And then, um, yeah, like if you also look at Mutasami when he made the, when he got called up, he also had a decent season with the bat. So it can only help uh, your your cause, or you know, I think it can also help your bowling because, like I said, it takes a little bit of pressure off your bowling. Yeah, um, Imran, um, I want to ask you that: Have you had? I know you might not have, but have you had a chance to even speak to Pity and ask him for some advice yet? 
I I have actually chatted to him once um, when I was in Cape Town, but I think it's definitely something I'm going to try and obviously do a little bit more of just before he does go and stuff like mm. that. I think it will be nice to actually have that catch up with him. Yeah. So, Tony, to and, round off um, your... Oh, sorry. In, uh... Yeah. <laughs> Before before um, Tony does leave, can I also just ask him one question? Yeah, oh, here we go. <laughs> what was yours? <laughs> See, I ask gun questions. This guy's gonna be a clown, yeah. <laughs> I I just want to know, like, um, other than cricket and like um, TikTok, what do you do in your free time? <laughs> <laughs> Firstly, my TikToks have been gone. I don't know what you're on about. <laughs> I found my niche, which is remaking movie scenes. I think we'll do one now again, maybe tomorrow. But other than that, I just read and play FIFA. Uh, and we started skipping, which has been quite fun. I'm glad to hear, bro. Do you have any, um, um, do you have any non cricket related questions just to round off for you, man? Okay, okay. Um... <laughs> Imi, Imi takes his swag quite seriously, I'd say. He's quite a swaggy guy, seeing as though he goes to the UK. I wanted to know, in the Titans team, who do you think had the worst swag? The worst swag? The worst. Say it with your chest as well. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. I have to think about this one, but um, I know it's I saw a, some interesting things there. I wanted you see, to know that's what why, you saw. That's why it's actually it's actually something that like I have to think about because there is some interesting things that I saw. <sighs> I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have to give it to Grant Thompson. Eh? <laughs> 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 the Solomons weren't doing it for you, boss. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, you're talking about the style here. Yeah. You had a, you actually have a cool comment here from someone. Page said, "Man's eyebrows on flick." So uh, don't say someone, Khalid. We know who that is. <laughs> don't say someone. We know who that is. <laughs> yeah. Why did so, she just thanks. say man's? Why did she say you. my man's? <laughs> Bye bye, guys. Shot Tony. Yeah, you. I think it's better if you leave right now. Hey, hey, just go do your eyebrows. <laughs> I can't. Huh? Cool. How do you even leave this? Cool. So, Imran, I hope you don't mind that. I just had to get one of your buddies on here to ask you a few questions. No, so, no problem at all. It's time for the comments. Um, let's just ask some of the comments questions. Um, we have a question here from. Aman Preeti wants to know who is your favorite off spinner. Okay, so I have two because for different formats, different off spinners. So in Test cricket, I am a big fan of. I actually think I have two in each format as well. So I'll say I'm a big fan of Nathan Lyon and Ravi Chandran Ashwin. Mm-hmm. And I think in one day, one day slash 2020 cricket, I am a massive fan of Imran Tahir and uh, Sunil Narayan. Okay, so I want to ask you about Lion because what, what, what stands out to you about him specifically? Because if you talk to some guys, they won't like really necessarily, some people won't put him in that, that class, you know, um, with regards to the Warns and the Muralithans and all of those amazing spinners, but what stood out to you about Nathan now? What do you like about his style of play? So I think that he's a guy that knows how to deceive Batman with flight and speed. Like I think he's an expert in that. He he doesn't bowl your Dusras and he doesn't bowl all of these other funny balls. He is a man that would have a slider, but he'll defeat you or deceive you, I would say, in flight and with his speed and and he's so good at that and he gets so many guys out just like that and it's okay, actually unreal because he's actually not always playing in spinning conditions and 
he's still getting lots of wickets. That just shows his quality, which is quite, uh, which I think it's quite kind. That's awesome. Okay, we've got another one from the latest. <clears throat> How does a scene like LPL compare to playing domestic, like playing for domestic things like the Titans? Okay, you haven't played with the Cobras yet, but. <laughs> um, yeah, the LPL is is quite a nice tournament. I I enjoyed it. I I think I was actually in the first tournament that started, and you know, it's a tournament that's obviously got a lot of got a lot of things going for it. Um, Kwani de Kock played with me in the LPL. We got Imran Tahir that played Keshav Maharaj. And these, these are just guys that have played in the teams that I've played in. I'm not sure. mentioning a whole bunch of guys that have played in this tournament. And I think it's quite a good platform. And I think it's definitely somewhere where you will, you will get a lot of good players playing in it. I... I would say um, when you're playing for franchise cricket, it's obviously going to be a better standard because there's more of those players playing all the time. Yeah. But it's it's quite a nice 2020 tournament. Guys will always take you on. It doesn't, and you know, guys don't really care. Like they want to actually, like if you're bowling to them, they want to make sure that they take you down. And it doesn't really matter how you bowl. If you bowl a bad ball, you're always still going to get hit. It doesn't matter really the tournament. Yeah. I think. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Okay, so this question kind of goes with your off, with your off-spinner question, but I don't know if your off-spinners are also your favourite players, but this is asking Khan wants to know who are your favourite cricketers, batsman and bowler? Um, batsman would have to be Hashim Amla or Jacques Callis. Um Bowler, I am a massive fan of Dale Stone. I just think that he comes with such good energy and it doesn't really matter the time of day he's going to give you that same energy. Whether it's mm. the last session, whether it's the first session, whether it's in warm-up, I just think that he's an unreal talent where he could do that all the time for South Africa. Okay, awesome. And she has a follow-up question actually, but it's completely different than what's keeping you occupied during lockdown. Um. Well, I'm keeping occupied with some gym training. Um doing some Netflix watching, I, I should say, because I feel like I've been watching a lot of Netflix. Like, if I did, actually didn't have this account, I think I would be a bit under the pump, you know? <laughs> I, <laughs> and, um, yeah, I've also been uh, indulging in all sweet things that are being made at home. There's uh, a lot of effort that are, that's going into that. And yeah, the, the, mom's, the mom's looking after the boy, yeah. <laughs> what are you be watching on Netflix? What is some of the shows? Um, yeah, I'll I'll watch a variety of stuff. I I'm not really the biggest series man, but mm, I have okay. been watching a, a lot couple of, of series. But yeah, I'm more of a guy that will watch a lot of movies, you know. And I'll okay. I'll be into comedies. I'll be into thrillers. I'll be into action. I like also movies that you know would make you think a little bit and. Mm -hmm get you involved in the movie where you're like, okay, now what's going to happen next, you know? Yeah. And a horror, a horror can go a long way for me, definitely. So I, you don't know a lot about me, but I'm a massive, massive movie fan. I'm a, I would call myself a movie fanatic as well. So um, okay, I, studied, so... I studied film and stuff, so I really love movies. So if you have some questions, are you gonna give, anything? Are, are you going to give me your top three movies at least? Okay, let me give you a top, my top three. So my top three... Number one, one of my favorite movies of all time will have to be The Departed. I don't okay. even watch that. That's, that was incredible. Um, I'm a massive Christopher Nolan fan, Martin Scorsese fan. So um, I'll have to put The Dark Knight into that into that category as well. I thought The Dark you Knight see, that's was... My, that, that's my number one, I think. <laughs> the Dark Knight was amazing. <laughs> wow. Like, really, the whole production. I'm one of those guys, though. I'm a massive comic book fan as well. So... The way I see Batman is a lot, it's different to the way they portrayed him in them. So I believe that he was a good Batman, um, Christian mm -hmm. Bell. But as a Bruce Wayne for me, he didn't make it believable for me as a playboy, philanthropist, all this rich guy. He didn't do that right for me. But as Batman, he was phenomenal. So I'm caught between the two over there because I feel that other characters in the movie did a lot better as their character than he did as Bruce Wayne. And that's his opinion. 
that's a, that's that's a opinion of mine. Number three would have to, number three is a difficult one. So it has to because I'm a massive Martin Scorsese fan. It's either between at the moment Goodfellas, but then I saw more recently Mad Max Fury Road. I saw when it came out. And I thought from a director's point of view, from a visual point of view, Mad Max Fury Road was incredible. It had me, I was out of breath. The first opening scene, 15 minutes opening scene was just phenomenal. Mm. And the fact that he used practical effects throughout the movie and he didn't use, oh, there was only one scene, I think, in the whole movie that was CGI and that was that storm. The rest was all practical effects. It was 70 year old man or 60 year old man to produce a movie of that quality. I was just like, my right. blow. So those are that's my top three. What's yours? I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna throw in a few different genres, man. I feel like um, I'm a man that loves comedy, and don't mess yeah. with a Zohan has to also be up there for me. I I, I, I think a lot of people might might take that as like a, a silly movie and whatever, but that's definitely a movie where you'll hear me walking around giving quotes of that movie, and I think like that. That's just why it has to be in my top three, you know? <laughs> um, three. Oh, this is quite an interesting one for me because I don't know, like, I, I, I think I'll have a top two, man. This, the third one, I, I'm going to have too many options for you. Now it's going to become a top 12. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Same with me. I didn't know how to ask the question. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I I don't know what I'm gonna give three to, but when it comes to me, I'll definitely pull it up. Cool, um, because I mean, for comedy wise, um, I do like comedy, but um, I'm a big Kevin Hart fan, so basically everything that he does, I I liked. I mean, The Wedding Ringer was, I thought that was hilarious, <laughs> that movie. So, I what 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 was, what was that other one with him? Um. Preparing that guy for jail was was it the same movie? Oh yes, yes, yes with, with the Will Ferrell. Um, yes, 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 yes. It, um, what's the? I can't remember now. I also can't think of the name right now. You guys know in the comment section, just put it in the comment section. I can't remember right now what it was called. Um, yeah, but that was the was him for yeah for the for, for the the prison cell. Yeah, that was that was hilarious. Will Ferrell and him in combination. I would never thought that that would have been on screen together. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah. Obviously, um, I think I'm trying to think now. What was a movie that really that made me laugh hard for recently? I just can't put my finger on a lot of them because I mean, um, comedies can become quite dry very quickly. Um, I thought Super Bad, Super Bad was hilarious for me, but a different type of comedy. Uh, hangover, superbly funny. Um, yeah, so there's quite a few comedies. Um, yeah, we must share each other. We must share lists. <laughs> I'm keen. I'm keen. I, I'm, yeah. I, I, I can I can send you a picture of my net, Netflix last watched comedies if you want. <laughs> yeah, please. I'm, I'm gonna check them out because I mean, from recent recent films, um, like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was fantastic. Um, Knocked Out was. Uh, was amazing as well um and also i watched the gentleman which is a um a film by guy Ritchie. Oh. what a movie that was i was like good movie. Good movie. i was like Matthew McConaughey. i've never seen him like that before man like act in that way he didn't he wasn't the normal all right all right all right type of guy he was yeah. different he, like, he was completely yeah. different okay so let's go to another one over here um we got here from Muhammad. He says, Monty, where are you at breaking your fast? <laughs> <laughs> where am I breaking my fast? I don't think I can break my fast anywhere Sorry. else. I'm going to be breaking it at home. What's some of your So for the Muslims out there, we'll just get a little bit. Because obviously we started Ramadan now. So um, uh, fasting period for the for people that don't know what Ramadan is. Um, so uh, what are some of your favorite uh, iftar meal or snacks that you like to have? I'm not gonna lie to you. I get very nice things here at home. There will be samosa. There will be pies. There will be moons. There will be, you know, all of the stuff that you think is nice. At some point in this month, I will have that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and when, 
when you're not at home, um, obviously, when it, if it wasn't locked down, um, do you sometimes invite um, people over, um, like uh, your, your non-Muslim friends? Like, for example, did Tony come eat by your house or something like that? Um, what was that experience like? <laughs> um, not Tony, because um, last year I was also in England and stuff like that. Like, oh, yeah. I've been in England for a few Ramadans, which is also very different because there you're now pushing 18-hour fast and... Yeah, I would lie to you. That's uh, it's not the easiest situation around, but yeah. it's it's something you do, you know, and it's something you get used to. And if you want to do it, you will do it, no matter what it is. But the experience yeah. of that is quite nice because they will always say, uh, "Can we come over to break our break our fast and whatever yeah. one supper?" We know that the spreads are always gonna be sorted and whatever. <laughs> and it's quite nice because they will just indulge. They'll try, you know. They'll be maybe four things on the table and they will try all four things like you'll just go for the one that you like mm. and then they'll be like nah i need to have all four of these things here. because i mean i'm not gonna maybe get this opportunity again so let me dump in this course this sauce this chutney i i, I need to try everything here, you know? <laughs> cool so they, they actually told us so quite a few people told us in the comment section the movie's name was including um page uh, she, they said, uh, Get Hard is the name of the movie. Thanks for that. I couldn't remember. It just slipped my mind. Jumanji was also quite funny, actually. Um, Jumanji was. Uh, one of my best friends, Zubair, um, he told me uh, Jumanji, and that was also quite funny. I found it hilarious. Let's go into another question. I don't know how much time you have. I'm trying to get as many as I can. Um, no problem. There's an, it's maybe they came in quite late, so maybe you can tell them, but um, who encouraged you to play cricket? Um, yeah, I would say it was, I would say like my dad would have been probably the biggest person encouraging, encouraging me to play cricket. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of people that have encouraged me over the years and I don't want to say all the names because I don't want to forget all the names, you know what I mean? But there's, been, the WhatsApp. there's, there's, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's been uh, there's been a lot of coaches that have played a big role in my life, and all the coaches at Lens, all the coaches at Dalfos when I was growing up. Then the I would say the more recent ones would be like uh, Richard Desneves. They'd be uh, at Melo Budibe. Those those were the two main coaches at Easterns. Then there would be like a Mandla there. Mark Boucher, you know, like, and like, obviously those, and a Neil Levinson, there, 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 was a, there was a lot of guys that have played a big role in my cricket. I can't say encouraged me, but I would say played a big role in helping me grow as a person, whether it was mentally, whether it was technically. And I'm sorry if I didn't mention your name, but there's a lot of guys that have played a big role in, in, that, in that capacity. And I'm very thankful to every single one of them. And if it was ladies as well, I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, I, I, I don't want to forget anybody in this because there's also there's also been a lot of good things that have been said. And like, you know, it's, it's, always, it's always nice when, you, when you're learning from new people. Yeah, and this ties in brilliantly into an excellent question from Garabo, actually. She says, you've mentioned that your journey was long and involved a lot of movement. Things haven't always gone according to plan. What kept you motivated to carry on working and pushing to succeed? I've I've always had a goal of uh, playing at the highest level, and it's it's also it's also something where you know if you see your friends succeed and you see all of these people succeed, it also drives you to want to succeed. And I just think that it's it's that's why people would say like stay around people that are always like doing things in their life and always active and always positive and always looking for success because those people always drive you in the right way and those people will tell you what it took them to get there and I think if you hear enough stories about that at some point it doesn't really matter what it is but you're going to also want it yeah. you, you might not say what, in what it is at the time and then later in life you find out okay no it was this but that that is definitely something that has driven me hectically in my life. And I I've always wanted to play at the highest level. I've always wanted to be in the IPLs, be in the CPLs, be in these tournaments. And 
it's I, I I know some people will say, oh no, nah, you know, it's not it's not it maybe not gonna happen now, whatever, whatever. But I think if you have that drive and you have that willpower to want to do something, you will you will want to do it, and nothing will actually stop you from doing it. Mm. That's so. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's what it is. So the next question, I haven't actually spoken to you about this much. So maybe you could start with <clears throat> telling me about the experience first and then going into answering this question, which is, is there any intention of coming back to the UK? Um, so yeah, like start with, maybe start with what it was like first to play there and um, what you learned from that experience. Um, so I've played for two clubs in the UK. I have played for Hornchurch, which this guy is from. And um, I've played for Eckington, so two clubs in the UK. And one is in Essex, one is in uh, Sheff- Derbyshire, Sheffield. Like okay. And yeah, it was, it was a very interesting experience. The first time I went, it was like super hot and like the weather was really good. The second time I went to the other place, it was more up north and it was rainy and cold and stuff like that. But both times were amazing experiences. It's it's something that I'll never forget. You you get to play in different conditions. You get to play in weather, different weather conditions. You do, play with a different ball. You play against different opposition. It's 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 a crazy experience, and you get to travel a little bit, which is something that you constantly don't do because yeah. who's gonna not want to travel? You know what I mean. Yeah. And I think it's quite it's it's quite an amazing experience for anybody to actually go overseas and you you learn so much, you you know, you 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 learn about things where sometimes it would maybe be someone that you think is very old and they would give you like some sort of advice where you actually think about it and you're like, yo, this could actually help me if I use this. And those people are very hard on you, let me just let you know that when you don't perform you get told about it and you get yeah. and the bar lady will even tell you, listen, you know, what was going on today? You know, that wasn't a great performance from you. <laughs> <laughs> and and the and the coaching, what's it like there? Is it um, compared to South Africa, is it completely different? Um to the in the now? Um I would say coaching wise, um you don't how can I say this? You don't really work with a lot of new coaches that side because you're not really playing at the highest level. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, there's there's different opinions, man. And I think that's gonna it's it's sometimes nice and a fresh start to listen to new opinions and to get new voices to listen to. And you know that can always help because you never know what someone else can tell you. Like that's why they say. You need to keep learning as much as you can and take in the stuff that will help you get better as a cricketer. Cool. That's awesome. So a last question from Birdie is, what is your favorite shisha flavor? <laughs> oh, Birdie. This, 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 let, let, me just, let me just give you a little bit of a story about this, man. Um, there, was this, there was this little bit of a rumor flying around that uh, Richard Bird vaped more than he breathed. <laughs> and actually they said like it doesn't it doesn't actually have to be cold for him to actually breathe vape smoke out like it, it was just one of those things you know like generally when it's cold people will be walking and now they're breathing and now you're seeing that steam kind of thing you know what i mean this man would be vaping 24 7 like he'd be having a burger in one hand have a bite next thing vape in the other hand <laughs> so it's a very interesting question for him to ask me. Uh, that's hilarious um <laughs> so we got one more okay there are some still coming in so i'm gonna round it off for this one okay have you gotten better at fifa because you got a lot of competition at, at, the, at the COVID. There's a lot of guys that I want to that I want to take you on that have seen it in the previous I- interviews. So have you gotten better in FIFA? This is a man that I played FIFA <laughs> with once and this man quit at half time because he got 7 0. He's a man from the UK, you know. You actually think like the guys from the UK would be better at this stuff, you know? And you're like Yeah, they 
they play they play football the whole time you know they brought up with the english premier league the best league in the world you think like these guys are actually masters of fifa and stuff like that but i remember this guy firmly quitting and saying that he needs to go home and have coffee with his mom <laughs> after our game and we, and we only played half so it didn't really make sense to me <laughs> Who do you support? In, um, I didn't even ask you that. Who do you support? Um, I'm a massive Liverpool supporter. Oh God! So you're gonna join what? Zubi against me and Jason? <laughs> who do you Who do you support? So you know Jason Smith and myself. We both are Man United supporters. So normally, um, we'll we'll chat to Zubi and we'll give him a hard time because he's the only Liverpool supporter. Unless Ash was around, then we stop. So you were gonna. Ash was also a Liverpool supporter, and also Zubi's also a Liverpool supporter. So now it's, I know what it's going to be like now. So we're going to have some competition. So, uh, so, so basically, in, it's just going to be adding to the cabinet like Liverpool's trophies at the moment. <clears throat> what trophies? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, what trophies? <laughs> do you think you guys deserve to be... Obviously, you're going to say yes, but do it from a... From an unbiased opinion, an objective. Opinion. Uh, do you think that even though it's mathematically, even though it's mathematically possible for you to lose the last few games and lose the league, do you think you should just be handed the league? Is that how a Liverpool supporter would want to just be handed the league and handed the English Premier League trophy? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not gonna lie to you. Like this question has been coming up a lot, and it, it's it's just something that it, it's been a thing at the moment. You know, like. You guys want to be given the league and whatever, whatever. But um, yeah, we'll take it. We'll <laughs> of take course, you. <laughs> I have to ask this question because it was asked with a please, and when people say please, I just have to do it. So, who are you placing in the ASCC? What is that exactly? You can explain to me. I'm down. Um, that, that's the club team I played for in the Easterns League, uh, Actonville Cricket Club. Oh, okay. Actonville Spurs Cricket Club, yeah. Um, to be honest, uh, I, I haven't been uh, on the transfer rumors page and seeing any of that, so I can't really give you a hundred percent answer here. I think cool. uh, the right man to contact would be um, Zunaid. <laughs> I love Zunaid, Zunaid's great, anyway. So, um just to sign off, Amy, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really had a lot of fun getting to know you, etc. I'm, I'm sure when you come down, we can maybe go get a grab a coffee or something and catch up again. But um, lastly, just a uh, message to the Cricket Fanatics Mag fans that have asked me to bring you up to this platform. Thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate it very much. And it's been a lovely show. I've enjoyed every minute of it. Okay, cool. Thanks a lot, Amy. And I'll speak to you again soon. All right, so take it easy. Bye-bye.